Um, okay, uh, my name is Heiko Gerstung. I'm a, a managing director. That's the German equivalent of a CEO uh, for a small company called Meinberg. Um, we are um, specialized in synchronization solutions and our um, products uh, are used in all kinds of mission critical applications. One of the most mission critical applications uh, that I can think of is that we provided the synchronization for this year's Super Bowl broadcast. Um, uh, but you can also find our products in the, the, let's say, most prestigious financial data centers, uh, stock exchanges. Um, we are synchronizing over 60 um, uh, or in, in 60 countries, we are we are synchronizing the power grid. Um, we also have telecom uh, customers. So what Kishan uh, explained uh, in his last presentation is also something that affects us. For example, synchronizing a, a nationwide uh, telecommunication network with 35 million subscribers. Um, um, we will also be responsible for some of your uh, alarm clocks uh, on your phones, because we also have customers who are synchronizing hundreds of millions of smartphones, uh, uh, laptops, and so on, using our equipment with a, a global infrastructure. And uh, so if you are late to your next meeting, you can blame that on us. Um, I will talk today about synchronization in the data center. So this is more like a uh, an introduction into synchronization and uh, why you might need that in the data center. All those guys on this end of the room who are speakers uh, and who are from the timing industry uh, already know that, but if, if you're new to that, I, I try to uh, basically get you up to speed why this might be interesting for your specific use case. And um, synchronization in general uh, is the art of trying to uh, make devices believe they are on the same time. Um, uh, time, the same time is is uh, is something that is not an exact term, right? Um, um, so um, in some of my in some of my uh, slides, I I use the term exactly, and then I put a small uh, quest, uh, uh, exclamation mark behind it because uh, what you understand uh, being exact or precise uh, uh, depends strongly on the context, right? If I tell my kids I will exactly pick you up at 3 a.m. in the morning from this party, uh, they will still believe uh, they comply with that uh, when they show up 15 minutes later or something if I'm lucky. So, uh, and, and in other applications, if, uh, if your time is off by 100 nanoseconds, uh, uh, you are screwed, okay? So, uh, 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 hard to live in both worlds, but uh, all the guys from the timing industry know that and have to deal with that. <laughs> um, so, why do you need synchronization? There's basically just two applications, two use cases for that. One is, you want to measure something, or you want to detect when something happened, which is typically the basis of most measurements. Um, the other uh, thing is you want to make things happen at exactly, in uh, exclamation mark, uh, the same time. And um, yeah, time as a, is a concept, is a human concept, right? Uh, that's also a, a problem that we typically have in the timing industry, that timing is something that humans came up with. Uh, and uh, back in the day, everyone said, yeah, uh, a day means 24 hours. A day means basically uh, uh, that the sun is on its highest point at noon. And uh, um, from that point on, we basically divided uh, the, the, the time into into smaller and smaller uh, units, um, down to, I, I'm not sure where we are at, attoseconds uh, uh, at the moment, and they are looking for, for even smaller things. One of the problems with that definition of time, using the sun or better, the Earth's rotation, is that the Earth is not very accurate. Uh, it's not accurate enough anymore for, uh, let's say, these high-end applications where we talk about nanoseconds. So that's why um, humanity came up with the concept of using atoms and, and the, um, basically 
transition between two uh, states of, an, of a cesium atom to define how long a second actually is. And that's why we sometimes have to deal with leap seconds, because that is the, basically the correction we do um, in order to make sure that the sun is at its highest point at noon, uh, uh, even in 500 years from now. Um, that is because the Earth's rotation is not exact enough, and uh, this, this would basically change over centuries. Um, okay, so data centers, I'm a little bit afraid to try to tell you guys what a data center is, right? So uh, uh, I just wanted to, to raise the point that data centers can come in all kinds of shapes and forms. All our customers um, uh, from the, let's say, Arizona Cardinals Stadium where Super Bowl happened, um, uh, uh, all the way to a substation or a bigger substation, there can be a small little data center in it if you want. And um, um, that's the same happens on, let's say, defense, uh, with our defense customers where we are synchronizing battleships, for example. You have a small little data center on each battleship that is uh, connecting all the sensors, all the weapon system, uh, all the management and everything together. So um, um, I just wanted to raise awareness that a data center does not always mean halls and halls of uh, racks. Um, it, can be, it can come in all shapes and forms, basically. Um, okay, so yeah, data center in a truck, moving data centers, that's typically uh, a defense applications. Sometimes data centers are thrown out of an aircraft, uh, hopefully the parachute works, and then they are basically set up by someone uh, in the middle of nowhere. Uh, so synchronization application, so I'm just giving you a few examples of why that is required. The, the let's say, very uh, common one, very simple things are you need physical access control to your data center, right? So you have your key card and you want to enter in the morning. Um, and uh, maybe you are only allowed to enter in a specific time frame, so the security system of the data center needs to know it's 7 o'clock, now this guy can basically enter hall 3, uh, level 4 or something. Um, of course, you also have surveillance cameras, uh, CCTV uh, going on, and if you have multiple cameras, you want to be sure that they all have the same time, uh, so that you can see if someone is moving from the left side to the right side or the other way. Uh, um, and um, another um, yeah, very, very common uh, application is of obviously building automation and energy, so sometimes lights go, have to be switched on at a certain time, um, uh, heating, air condition, and so on. Probably not in the, in the server halls right there, you should have air condition all the time, but uh, in the offices, for example, or in places where humans are, you, you want to save energy by switching off the air condition at night or, or when nobody is working there, and uh, that's, that's also requiring timing. Not very exact time, at least for us. For my kids, it would be ins an insane level of, of exactness, right? But, but um, yeah, we're at least talking minutes or seconds sometimes. Um, and sensor data, that's one of the, uh, one of the things that I talked to. So the, the, the auto building automation is one thing where you, uh, where you want to happen, something to happen at a certain time. Um, that is the one use case. And if you have sensor data, temperature sensors or something like that, uh, you want to record that data and you want to put a timestamp on each of your recordings. And, uh, and that is the other use case where you basically measure something or timestamp an event. Um, then we go to the more, let's say, IT-related uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, use cases, um, uh, event log timestamps, right? The same thing that I just explained with uh, surveillance cameras where you want to know, uh, did I go from left to right, also applies to your server logs. You, uh, if something goes wrong on one system that affects a second system, you need to be sure that uh, if you look at the log files of those two devices, you find out what happened first here, what triggered what. Um, and that's, uh, that's a pretty common use case for, for timestamps, uh, for, for time synchronization. Because those two systems, if they don't have the same time, uh, trying to correlate these events and trying to find out what happened first is not possible, uh, reliably at least. <clears throat> 
So security-related sync applications, we talk about, again, restricted access not only to the to the physical uh, uh, door, but also to your to your servers. Sometimes you have sh you have people who are only allowed to access a certain system during their shift or something, and then uh, um, you have to make sure that the system knows what time it is in order to allow this guy to log on at at a certain point in time. And uh, yeah, certificates, of course, have a validity, have an expiration date, and you also need to make sure that your devices have the time. Again, here we typically do not talk about nanoseconds. Uh, a day is, is uh, typically more than enough, but still, they need a correct time in order to find out that if, if someone is SSHing into the system and presents a certificate, is that still valid or not? Um, and even, let's say, more special uh, application is um, if um, data center operators, for example, uh, co-location uh, data center operators are providing time as a service. Uh, although we, we, of course, love all you guys to buy your own small little Mindberg device, right, and put it in your rack, uh, typically that's not very efficient. If you have a data center, um, you need roof access for a G GPS antenna, and uh, it, it totally makes sense that a data center um, um, yeah, co-location provider, for example, provides you time as a service so that you don't have to set up your own system. So you get a feed, a PTP feed, for example, and can use that to synchronize your systems in your small little colo rack, um, and, and that's fine. It's the same uh, that, um, as uh, providing power or cooling to, to, to your uh, racks that you're renting at this space. Um, Distributed databases, that's the, the uh, stuff with, uh, that, that, for example, Amat is dealing with. Uh, so if you have a lot of distributed databases, and I stole a lot of the, the data on this slide or the, the text on this slide from, from one of his presentations. Uh, um, if you have replicated databases and you have updates, uh, you need to make sure that, um, uh, some, that, that all these updates are basically uh, having a timestamp so that the system can basically uh, apply them and every single replica can basically apply them in the, exactly the right sequence, for example. Um, and uh, in the telecom world, uh, you have time division multiplexing communication systems, so a time slot for each of your, for example, smartphones uh, in which it is allowed to send data to a, uh, to a base station, and then it is, uh, you have uh, 100, I don't know, uh, microseconds, then the next guy has 100 microseconds, and so on. And in order to be sure that everything works correctly in this case, uh, of course, the time needs to be very synchronized um, and, and exact. Um, we also have, have de uh, in the defense world, tactical data links, uh, link 16, link 22, which also require uh, synchronization to some extent. And you have, in the, in the military world, we also have things like frequency hopping, where you have two radios and they are changing the radio frequency very quickly so that nobody can basically listen in. Um, and uh, that also requires, obviously, that the transmitting device, the transmitting radio, is changing the frequencies at exactly exclamation mark, the same time as uh, the receiving um, uh, radio. Otherwise, you will, re you will hear glitches and you will uh, probably hear, hear ra the audio dropping out. So how am I in terms of time? Two minutes, okay, very good. Um, so um, synchronization technologies, there are multiple ways to uh, transport time basically from one device to the other. Um, when we look at our devices, which are, for example, receiving time from a GPS satellite, uh, they can um, uh, transform or adapt this time into all kinds of different formats. For example, one of the, 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 the most common ones you probably all know is NTP. Uh, that's an IETF uh, um, uh, standardized um, network time protocol, and that one is, uh, is capable of basically exchanging time between a GPS synchronized system and your servers or your switches or your routers um, just using the, the, um, the uh, network connection that it uses anyway. Um, PTP is, um, is an, also a, a, a network-based um, time synchronization protocol, which has the ability to go down to nanoseconds in terms of the accuracy, um, PTP H, uh, high accuracy or white rabbit as it was called um, before um, is um, even capable of 
trans uh, uh, is of, of sending time to from one device to the other uh, with a precision of less than one nanoseconds. Not a lot of uh, um, applications need that today, but uh, the one thing we've learned in over 40 years of experience in this business is that uh, the requirements are, are basically uh, um, increasing or, or getting tougher uh, day by day. Okay, and for, for everything that is not IT, there is not data center and no, not uh, basically network based, there are uh, a myriad of different signals that have been invented in all the different uh, industries. Uh, serial time strings is one of the ones that uh, we as a computer geek uh, uh, community can probably relate to uh, the most, but there are also IRIC time codes, um, pulse per second, uh, electrical or optical signals, and so on. So there's a, a ton of these uh, 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 um, signals that are used in different industries um, to send time from one device to the other. Typically, those uh, signals come are still used, but they they are coming from a time when there was no IP network, for example, between two substations in a power grid. And then we have, okay, my time is up. Uh, we have um, um, synchronization in the node as well um, um, uh, when, when the time basically arrives at your network port and then it has to be somehow uh, transported to your application. Okay. Let's see if there Thank are you. any questions. All right. Everything, everything is crystal clear. That's good. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, there's one. I'm sorry. Go for it. I'm sorry. Hi. My name's Paul Borrell. I'm the founder of the It's About Time Club, uh, where we t have computer scientists and physicists discuss the nature of time. So my question is, um, are you attempting to create a simultaneity plane with this notion of clock synchronization? Sorry, I didn't get the... A what? simultaneity plane. Can you say it again? Um, let me start again. Einstein taught uh, us uh, 100 uh, years ago okay. that simultaneity uh, is relative. Mm -hmm. And so the idea that you can synchronize clocks takes us back to Newtonian time. Yeah. D do you see a discrepancy in that? And perhaps uh, some, some um, challenges in the use cases, like distributed systems, for example, whose algorithms need order of events uh, guaranteed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, ensembling time is, is typically what, what is already used in, let's say, higher-end applications, right? Again, it, it, it all depends on um, how accurate do you need to be in your specific uh, uh, use case. But, um, but in general, when, when, you, when you have, that's, that was one on my slide, when you have two clocks, uh, by definition, uh, you, you, do, you never have two clocks which have the same time. And, uh, and therefore, um, um, and, and that's basically a given that's that's by definition. So uh, that's something you always have to keep in mind when you when you are uh, looking at at let's say problems and, and you try to solve problems or try to provide timing to a distributed system. That uh, yes, uh, you try to synchronize these clocks, but um, um, uh, time will never be the same in in, in all these places. It's just a question of how uh, uh, how big the error is basically between them. 